regularly. This is the map that I think most people wish had made it to the, the map pool. Uh, Ganymede was a really nice submission. I personally rather enjoyed this one as well. I was a little bit sad it didn't quite didn't quite make the cut. But uh, before we get into this, I gotta give a shout out to Shea Blue, aka the better half of Kitty the Neko. <laughs> Twenty dollar donation says, "I must tip my proverbial hat to you guys." This event had Kitty the Neko and I awake at one thirty, and our nine year old son. Oh dear, just cut out one sec. Ugh, and our nine year old son Brian woke up at three a.m. This is truly a StarCraft 2 family. Oh, dude, don't let your nine-year-old kid be awake at 3 a.m. That's going to mess him up. But I'm glad that the StarCraft passion is real. And, of course, thank you for the $20 that will go towards the prize pool of the event. That makes the total prize pool well, $558 so far uh, for Snoot and Bunny. But spawning here to the south, it's going to be the Blue Jam player, Liquid Bunny. The top position has the Red Zerg. It's Liquid Snoot. Now, I mentioned before, the raffles have been opened. We already have over 37 people in the raffle to win an HTC t-shirt. If you guys want to get involved with that, make sure to uh, basically follow the design of the raffle in chat. If you've been watching for at least... The tickets only cost one per tooth. If you've been watching the stream for five minutes, you can afford at least one ticket. And, of course, that'll be a chance to win one of the HTC t-shirts, which is pretty cool. I'll basically be giving your Twitch name to the guy in charge, and he'll contact you afterwards. Is kind of how it's going to work. But uh, while we get to Ganymede as well, I want to remind you guys, after this game, we're apparently going to take a break. Uh, there'll be about 15 minutes to about half an hour or so of downtime. We're going to be joining Victor Goosens on Razor Comms. I believe Snoot and Bunny are also going to be hanging out in that uh, community chat they have over there. We'll show you guys on stream how to use Razor Comms if you've never used it before. It's a free program to download. It's just literally Razor Comms. You want to go Google that now. And uh, you can ask one of the co-founders of Team Liquid questions through that. And we'll be uh, interviewing him on streaming simultaneously. And uh, I guess that'll be a good time for Zombergrub to take a break to get some food and whatnot. Probably have hey. to I'll try and tag out with you later when like a co-caster comes on for you or something. So I don't leave you hanging. Okay. <laughs> so I figured, like, the way... Because we've got weirder breaks than the players do. They can just kind of do whatever. Uh, but... What I figure is probably best is if you take your break and go make food or breakfast, whatever you need, while we do the interview with Victor Goosens, then when you are, when we have like Xenocide or somebody join us later, I'll take the break then. That yeah. sound good? It's probably the, Makes sense. probably the easiest way to go about it. Makes a lot of sense. All right, so this, as you said, was one of the maps that people thought was probably going to make it into the map pool, but it got beat out by... Maybe the reason was it was a two-player map, and they wanted a four-player map. Yeah, Maybe. we we don't know the reasons why things were chosen. Because uh, the thing that's kind of funny is like even if even if this won first place, it wouldn't guarantee make it to the map pool. It's an interesting building. What's this in reference to here? I don't know. I thought maybe it was like I a think proxy it, or something. <laughs> but nope. I think it blocked out. It blocks him out from killing an overlord. I think it's like the big thing in the middle where Snoot's overlord. Oh, here. this thing. Yeah, I guess it's uh, the other one. The other one. Or this one. Okay, it wasn't the same idea. Like they're the doodads yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, that's funny. That's interesting. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so like basically the point we say that is that it's not a bad map. It wasn't not chosen because like oh god, it's so abusive X or Y way. It's actually pretty good. It even tells you where to take the bases. <coughs> Three, two, four. But so, Bunny's going to go for a two-base oh. build. <laughs> I still remember what you're talking about numbers, but yeah, I forgot they actually have, like, literal numbers. To tell you which yeah, yeah. To this one, guys. Choose this one. Pick me, pick me. Well, uh, for Bunny's sake, I mean, he's he's on the terror to come back into the series. 7 to 8. Score still surprisingly, shockingly close. I, I mentioned before, like, a lot of people have seen... Snoot lose to Bunny. A lot of people have seen Snoot beat Bunny. It's, it's really hard to say. And I think one of the really not important aspects, I really don't stress, like, this is not a big deal. It's like, people, I, I saw in chat earlier saying, like, we're going to find who's the best foreigner through this matchup and blah, 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 blah. And I don't think that's really the case. I think we're just going to see who can handle a best of 69 better. It's such an extendedly long, crazy series. There's so few players in StarCraft 2 that I think have the endurance to pull this off, much less... That have the potential to keep it such a close score. But also, I'm kind of hoping later on we're just going to start seeing a bunch of two racks in early pools. Like, 
<laughs> come come around the twenty four to thirty five like score mark type thing. Yeah, yeah, might be the case. We still have a lot of cheesy maps to go through too. I think it's the most important part is that we're not going to get into like the last twenty five maps are not all Alter Zim Alter um, Alter Zim Stronghold. <laughs> Taldrim Ultra plus Alter Zim Stronghold got me mixed up. Um, but then can all you the imagine? Maps. Taldrim Stronghold, right? You've got this map that is incredibly <laughs> big, like the map is insanely huge, but it's all airspace and really it's just all tall dream in the middle. Oh god. Uh, it's terrible. But you know, like we have Crossfire as like map 33 or Lost Temple as map 50. Like, this is a lot of usable maps coming up still. You guys still have three minutes to get into that raffle, by the way. Just again remind you, this is for the first of many, many, many HTC t shirts and TL uh, t shirts and Blizzard cards and all the giveaways that have been provided generously today for you guys, the audience. So make sure to get in that raffle if you can. Bailey's looking to come into the front lines. Ah, there's so many Marines here. This is that strong push we talked about earlier, but Snoot is a little bit better to, uh, to deal with it. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't have speed starting up behind this, right? Like, there's, there's no quick layer that came up. It's still hash retech and all this jazz, but. I like that he sacrifices the lair almost in, in terms to get better units out, because this push has been killing him all day. Mm -hmm. Nice snipe on the uh, Hellion. Mm. Definitely wants to save the Queens. He's going to want that creep spread later on. Oh god, that surround though is going to be so sexy. Oh, that's really good. I was going to say, if they die, but he still cleans it up, then it's still like, you know, excusable, but he cleans it up no problem anyways. And now oh, he'll geez. be able to control the map a little bit. There was never really a wall. That's not a wall. It's a no, cover. It's not. <laughs> It's not a wall. Yo, I, I gotta give it a single. Like That was a great hold. For no reason other than objectively of the fact that he has been losing to that push frequently. Uh, or aggressive pushes like that here in the series. So, it might not seem like a big deal. And some of you just think, like, okay, he'll hold off, like, Bunny's aggression. Big whoop. But that has been straight up killing him. So, nicely pulled off. Well executed. I'm very surprised that Bunny didn't bother to wall off too. Not because it's necessarily like so much stronger in general, but just because historically, Snoot has gotten these counterattacks off, like on the Midnight Madness map or Moonlight Madness, whatever, and then on Ohana. Like they were there's constant and and they did a lot of damage. So to not have him wall off again is just I don't know. Maybe like. Maybe he walled off, but kept on not raising the supply depots. He was just like, well, I'm not going to raise them anyway, so who, like, why even bother? <laughs> it's so mean to phrase it like that, but poor Bunny has not been raising his depots in his best of 69. That is for sure. Oh, another burrow. Another quick burrow. I mean, Suits has been doing this, like, late lair, like, late muta thing <clears throat> for uh, a lot of the games, and sometimes it really bites the ass, you know? Like, Bunny really gets... Uh, quite strong with all the drops going on, but I feel like Snoot has learned from those games where he was just getting absolutely wrecked with it, and he's he's gotten a lot better at uh, I don't know splitting up the banelings, uh, being in the right position most of the time, and uh, and whatnot. So I think that it's going to be okay here, even if his mutas are going to only come at like 15 minutes, which is quite late. And, uh, by the way, we will announce the winner of the t-shirt raffle after this game concludes. Again, one last time I remind you all quickly to make sure you download Razor Comms. Team Liquid actually just tweeted out a pretty good tutorial on how to use them if you don't know how. It's a very simple program. It's very similar to that of Skype in terms of ease of use. But I'll, uh, I'll show you on stream how to use it as well. Because all questions you're going to be asking a co-founder of Team Liquid are going to have to be done through Razor Comms, guys. And I think uh, Bunny and Suter are going to be hanging out while they eat some uh, food, too. Again, dropping onto Lings is usually not what you want to do, but if you have upgrades over them, then it might be possible and even worthwhile. In this situation, he had upgrades below Snooze, so did lose a full medevac full of Marines. Let's see here. Medevac's moving out once again. I mean, this, this is, by the way, this is the Bunny I'm really happy to see, this version of Bunny. We saw this in the early couple of games where he took very quick victories versus Snoot. And it's not just because of the aggressive opening with that push, but now he's gone drop heavy. Something Snoot's not really had to deal with in this series. Picks up, and it's gonna go straight to the main. That's killer, because this is such a long distance for slow banelings to get from the main to the third, to the fourth even, or this base here on the right. Uh, the banelings didn't come with this army, so the lings are gonna be targeted down. And any banelings that are coming in afterwards will be targeted Focus down like fire. that. Oh, even the one connects, it's still pretty good. 
trades going on for Bunny, and he loads over here in the mineral line once again. Not a whole lot of units left, but enough to drive off mining, enough to really, truly threaten the drones, and... I mean, not a lot of real damage has been done with this. It's mostly army trading, it's mostly cosmetic, but Bunny has been putting on the pressure and not letting Snoot snowball to that insane point where just no return. Yeah. The mutas are, you know, they're late. But he's dealing with it okay for now. The problem is, like, you know, he's not letting him snowball to, like, 30 mutas, which has happened in previous games, by constantly being aggressive, even if he's not, you know, killing all the drones or all the bases. And, uh, actually, speaking of killing a base, looks like he's gonna get this one. Yeah. That was, uh... <laughs> Uh, look at this pre-spread, no. by the way. Like He's really expecting the Bailings to roll in, but Snoot comes in with mostly Lings. And by spreading like this, Bunny just gives him the opportunity to surround each individual Marine. Yeah, yeah kind of funny how that works out. He probably could have had better luck being bolt up and then just picking up. Because again, the Mutas are not out yet. The Spire only recently finished. Well, There's the first few. I, I gotta give it to Snoot. Like this, when this started going drop heavy, I thought this was going to get out of hand. He looked like he was struggling with it, but... Handles it like a champ, cool under pressure, drone count still remains high on 72, and with four bases and a decent creep spread, I mean, Bunny just, it doesn't feel like he has map control. I don't think he does anymore. When the drops were, you know, <laughs> were going one, two, three, then it, it was a little scary, but Snoots said, like, he's gotten better at uh, dealing with that, and his late mutas are no longer causing him, you know, games, or at least mid-games. Able to recover. Now, two mutas die when they just pop out. That's pretty bad. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's. I don't know. Yeah, like, Suits aren't really taking a lot of real damage. It's just army for army and cosmetic damage is the best way I can think of to describe it. But centering the Marines over, picking up some of the drones. This is what he needs to start doing. This is what he needs to do. Force Snoot to build more drones, less lings. Force Snoot to defend these bases a little bit more dedicatedly. Uh, one of my shot was kind of okay. Nothing too crazy. Snoot's keeping strong with the armies, matching Bunny on army and upgrades and, of course, economy. He feels confident enough to push forward off of Pre, but I don't think he's quite there yet. Okay, that Thor is barely alive. Please repair that. Did you notice those banelings? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Snoot, like, the, the thing I'm most impressed with Snoot when it comes to banelings isn't this, but this is going to be amazing. Oh. Almost. But, oh, oh. that's scary. He, Bunny had an idea. He's so smart. But it's the fact that Snoot's really patient with them. There's so few people who can get away with that. But while he can be incredibly quick and with a millisecond of delay, like delay, uh, put a Bailey in the ground, at the same time, he can like sit there and wait on one for like forever. Now well, those 3-3 three, three upgrades are starting for Bunny and he does secure a fourth just by being very aggressive. That's one thing that's been missing is that Snoot hasn't had any uh, counterattacks. You know, all of his links have been dealing with drops until the Bermudas finally came out, and now he's had to deal with his push, of course, before he decides to send any links over there. But the push is not cleaned up with round number one. Does he have now round number two behind this? He doesn't. He's down 40 spikes I, I think that's it. Bunny's like kind of on that rampage, that snowball push. He did a great job dealing with the bailings. His splits have been so good this game. The Mutalus flock not in the high 30s, not out of control. And I guess my question is, like, when are we going to see Roach Hydra out of Snoot? These bailing trades have been awkward and fun, but uh, uh, GG, ladies and gentlemen, Bunny will now officially tie up the series 8 to 8. <laughs> oh, God.